double high, so it's down two. Great call up there by Sonic. Fox to the corner we go, and Fatal Blow is available. <laughs> Had the mic go down. Put him in. Put him Put in. Oh, no, no. no. And Sonic Fox becomes your final combat, Mortal Kombat 11 champion. Beyond, 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 beyond. We believe beyond, beyond. gamers from home deserve an open platform as big as those on the road. With more events moving online, a better system is needed to give casual and professional players a place to showcase their talent. The communities of Mortal Kombat Online and the Mortal Kombat subreddit are joining together to create a better way for players to compete online. Introducing Fight Club, a revolutionary new way for gamers to challenge one another in Mortal Kombat 11 with automatic analysis of all matches streamed via Twitch on your PlayStation or Xbox. With the Mortal Kombat Online mobile app, send challenges directly to any player of your choosing with complete crossplay and cross-generation support. Compete in ranked sets with the ability to earn placement on our global leaderboards. Mortal Kombat subreddit members receive exclusive integration with special flair and season support to determine who is the best combatant. Fight Club puts the character tier list debate to rest, providing real-time updates. See which character will provide you the best option of defeating your opponents. Fights analyzed in minutes, providing players with their own tailored profile. Matches are streamed live 24 hours a day on MortalKombatOnline.com and on Fight Club TV. Verified streamer support available for well-known content creators on Twitch. Find matches on Discord quickly with a dedicated challenge pool and other matchmaking options. The Fight Club public beta at FightClub.gg. Register today. It's in a league of its own. <laughs>
There we go. I was like, what the hell is going on, man? It was, uh, I don't know. My mic was like turned off for some reason. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Let me get my Twitch up. Uh, All right, are you already live?
What's up, everybody? Uh, Welcome to the first Sunday School podcast. And right here, we have the amazing and beautiful, gorgeous looking, very old, but still sexy, SoCal Honey Badger. Say hello, Honey Badger. What's going on, the people? All right. So today, we're going to talk about Mortal Kombat 11 for all those new players out there. And just a little background for uh, Honey Badger. Howdy Badger, when did you actually start becoming, you know, involved with the MK FGC? Um, probably with around MK9. Like, I was kind of a part of the uh, deception, like, when that game was being played online, I was pretty heavy into that. I was actually pretty heavy into the Mortal Kombat online community. Um, you could probably find my old ass posts from then, uh, but I wasn't really traveling for tournaments or anything. Um, I was just really heavily into the FGC in general. Um, and when MK9 came out, that was like the big crossover game where the Mortal Kombat community kind of got accepted into the wider FGC. And uh, those of us who were a part of you know the wider FGC decided to dip our toes into MK competitively and see how it worked. And, um, you know, I was there at the first ever Wednesday night fights for Mortal Kombat 9, like all those years ago. I was there the first day they didn't even have a stream for Mortal Kombat, I don't think. It was like a side yeah, game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. because I remember when MK9 was, was first announced, uh, NRS, they wanted to put as much money as they can to make it, um, you know, be known as a, a competitive fighting game and you know it, it worked you know they threw a lot of money into it and you know a lot of people started coming out started wanting to play it um when it came to mk9 like ever the starting of mk9 through mkx and mk11 which one would you say grabbed the most traction towards the fgc in your opinion Oh, MKX. That's not even, it's not even close. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, aesthetically was pleasing. It had the watch. tech. Yeah, it did. It wasn't even necessarily the aesthetics because most people in the FGC still think that game has jank ass animations. Mm -hmm. um, so they didn't like think that it was aesthetically good to look at. But goddamn, was the tech so fun to find and explore in that game. And there's a lot of like, uh, like I guess you would call them like lab monkeys is what I like to call them, but mm. people that just live in practice mode. And there's a large, large portion of fighting games that are those people. They, they don't play online. They couldn't give two shits about the story. Um, they don't have a waifu. They just like to go into practice mode and find tech and post it on YouTube. And that's their whole, that's, that's all they are involved in. And so Mortal Kombat X was one of the first games that NetherRealm put out that absolutely catered to that audience. And that's a huge part of the FGC as a whole. So when you make a game that caters to this huge audience that is usually ignored, right? Because everything's trying to be more beginner yeah. friendly. Um, so that's an audience that gets ignored in other games when NetherRealm was like, did the opposite and said, no, we're going to give you the most execution and most tech possible oh, with yeah. MKX. I mean, it, you know. It's obvious why that one is probably the one most accepted by the FGC. You know, Maximilian still does videos about MKX. Sajam still does videos about oh, yeah. MKX. Oh, yeah. That's that's the mainstream. That's our mainstream game. <laughs> MKX is going to turn into NetherRealm's third strike. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that because, you know, lately we, we've seen it on YouTube. We've seen it on Twitch. You know, we, we see a lot of our pro players uh, actually uh, – playing MKX again, you know, it, and, and there was a whole thing like uh, when people would start talking about MK11 and talking about going back to Injustice 2, that died very quickly. Now it's mostly about MKX because that was the game, the NRS game, Mortal Kombat game that people like to go back to, mm -hmm. including casuals and pro players. Now, when it came to like the difference between the game we have now versus, uh, you know, MKX, um, People are saying it was more fun. Now, how would you categorize of, you know, pros and casuals actually saying MKX is more fun, quote unquote, than MK11? 
Well, I think a lot of the discussion about MKX being more fun is more nostalgia fueled because the thing about fighting games is you always remember when you're winning and you always have more fun when you're winning. You don't have fun when you're losing. And so whenever people talk about MKX being more fun and I'm like, yeah, it is fun to just dash in and do 50 fifties and then like land a 20 minute combo that takes half of their health and gives you a full wall carry and the wall Oki and all this, like that shit's a blast. Uh, it's not so much fun to have that done to you. Yeah. And I think when people are talking about MKX being more fun, I'm like, yeah, dude, go play MKX and, uh, Wait until it's not your turn. Wait until you find that one guy who's more unga bunga than you. Yeah. You're going to slam your controller down. I, I, I actually just got to retract a statement. I said MKX will end up being, you know, NetherRealm's third strike. But I think MKX is NetherRealm's Marvel 2. Because that game is oh, so yeah. bonkers and stupid. And yet at a high level, it still kind of works. We like, just like Marvel 2. Um, you know, MK11 is probably going to be our third strike. But yeah. Okay. And it's it's nostalgia with MKX because as soon as you have that shit done to you, you're not having a good time anymore. And nobody remembers that when they're not playing MKX. It doesn't take long to get into a round and to start getting mixed and wall carried and feeling so helpless and useless in that game, mm -hmm. uh, you know, within the first round. And then you're like, oh shit, yeah, now I remember MKX. And I'm like, yeah, dude, if you were the one to get that initiative, you're that guy is probably having the time of his life just fucking yeah. you up. Yeah, uh, yeah, most definitely. So now I want to delve into, because I know on your Twitch channel, so if any, anybody watching this stream, go go check out uh, SoCal Honey Badger's uh, Twitch streams and YouTube channel which I'm going to link in the description below. Um, he talks about Mortal Kombat 11 and he talks about tech. Like I understand you have videos that say like, oh, an eight, like kind of like what Sway does, like a eight minute guide or a 10 minute guide to this character or, or whatnot, or maybe just some hot takes that you have uh, uh, for newer players or maybe casual players trying to be advanced players. Now, and talking about casuals versus like above average players, what is one like one big mistake that usually irks you that you can tell like, oh my God, like this guy isn't learning, like this guy isn't listening or this guy isn't adapting. Like what is the one thing that you commonly see the most that really just irks you or you, you see common? Well, to answer this question, first of all, we've got to make sure we have our, our definitions the same. So uh, we got to define casual because I consider myself a, quite a casual player of Mortal Kombat. I only really play it when I stream it and I don't touch it otherwise. Yeah. Uh, granted, I do stream quite a bit, but I'm more casual with this game. I used to play this game 10 hours straight and now like five days a week and now I don't do that. So a casual to me is, is a time investment issue, right? Okay. It's, it's uh, you know, someone who is casual is not investing a lot of their time, but that has nothing to do with their skill. Yeah. Because a lot of people would consider me to be quite skilled, mm -hmm. even though I consider myself more of a casual enjoyer of the game. So I think what you're talking about are people that invest, a, you know, a healthy amount of time into the hobby and have a relatively above average level of skill. Yeah. And yet they seem to have plateaued and are unable to improve. Yeah. See, that, those so, are the people you're talking about, right? Yeah. So the, the people I'm actually like like talking about is that um, casuals in terms of saying like, oh, I, I picked up MK11 on release date and, you know, I like playing this game, but not to the point where like I'm labbing a lot to the point where like, oh, I just learned like a... A, a really long combo i learn how to block and i know the mechanics and then i go into combat league versus somebody who wants to go lab practice the flaws blocks practice their neutral game practice strats you know and learn at you know adaptation from their losses and stuff like that like how would you compare like somebody is just like oh this guy he doesn't know what he's doing obviously he doesn't know what he's doing so i'm gonna blow him up for it like i'm talking about those people like, what is the one thing okay. that you catch? 
So first off, I'm actually not a big fan of labbing. I, I, I spend hardly any time in practice mode mm -hmm. uh, anymore. I use it. Uh, I see practice mode and the lab. It is a tool. I, and it is a tool that I use when I need that tool. So when I'm putting a house together, I'm not going to use a hammer when I need a screwdriver. That's yes. how I view practice yeah. mode. There are people that take practice mode way too far. Those are the what I was telling you about before. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about before the stream, but like practice monkeys or lab monkeys. Um, they just live for that. And I'm not a big fan of that as a way to improve. I've always said that if you want to get good at playing the game, there's only one way to do it. Play the fucking game a lot. <laughs> yeah. There's no amount of practice mode that will make you good, period, at all, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's just not. Uh, one of my good friends for, you know, decades within the FGC is a guy named Mike Watson. Uh, he oh, yeah. ran Super Arcade, uh, but that's not important. What's important is he is a national champion for Street Fighter many, many times, competed on an international stage. This was before esports. I mean, you're talking about this guy literally built his name just traveling to arcades, beating everybody's ass to the point where Capcom had to have tournaments to showcase how good he was. Like he was on the level of Alex Valle back then. And yeah. one of the bits of um, one of the things he told me that I found actually very shocking is he's like, dude, I don't even fucking know the frame data. He's like, I don't know any of my optimal combos. I don't know any of the frame data. Never have, never will. Don't give a shit. You don't need it to win. Yeah. I was like, huh. And what it came down to, I was like, okay, well, then what did you do? And he's like, dude, I just fucking played every day. These are mind games. You learn people's mind by getting in there. He's yeah. like, you can't fucking, you're not going to find somebody's brain on the frame data. Yeah. You're not going to find somebody's brain in an optimal combo. But I tell you what, if this guy likes to duck the throw, I'm going to start checking him with mids. Oh yeah, most, that's, most definitely. Yeah, that to me is the key, and I think that what is holding a lot of people back, as far as what you, you know, what a lot of you guys consider casuals, which I don't consider them casual. I consider them tryhards, right? They're trying mm. so hard, yeah, but it's just not getting any results. I'm just, dude, like, why are you not changing up your tactics? Mm. And the thing is, the information is there. Back in the day when Mike Watson was coming up. Okay, they had a phrase that sh save that shit for nationals. I'm not telling you my tech, fuck you. You gotta win this <laughs> tournament, right? But that yeah. was the mindset. Yeah, it's different now. Nowadays, if I want some tech, I can go on YouTube. Hell, I have a YouTube where I give the tech. You know, so like tech and knowledge and information, because it is so freely accessible, it's no longer an advantage. The yeah. advantage is in the psychology. And the only way you're going to get good at the psychology of fighting games is to just play a lot of them. And the thing about that is if you're having problems with like executional things like muscle memory, if you just play a lot and keep trying at that combo in a match, eventually you're going to get it anyways, because that is going to replace your practice time. Yep. Just, you know, if there's a combo you're working on, just don't sit there and drill it in practice mode. Just keep trying to land it on a dude. And then guess what? Now, when you do land it, you'll have it mastered because the nerves of fighting a live opponent won't be a factor. That's been there the mm -hmm. whole time. Yep. And that's why I tell a lot of my, uh, well, students, quote unquote, is that uh, a lot of them say like, hey, I want to I want to go to Outworld TV or I want to I want to try out, you know, Champions of the Realm. Go do it. Because I can guarantee you a lot of the times that when like, I mean, even back in the day when, you know, I wasn't like in offline pools was my biggest teacher because everything is constant. You win next year, you win next year, you win next year. And the matter of fact is, is that you're not going to learn anything if you're just like, oh, this guy did this string that's pissing me off online. So you take it to practice mode and just it's not going to be the same because you you know when it's coming you know when when that person is going to, or when the computer is going to do that stream because you told it to do that but if you first attend that person you lose zero and 10 then you do another first attend and you realize your number of wins start going up because you start seeing the patterns you start adapting to what they're doing and eventually he's not going to be the only person that does those gimmicks so you get to take that with you, that knowledge with you to other players who probably use that same character who's going to use that same gimmicks. And then they're going to use different things and then, you know, 
et cetera, et cetera. You're going to learn a lot more. So that's why I tell a lot of my students to play people, go to Fight Club, find people who use this certain character. Hey, you play Shao Kahn? Huh, I have problem against Shao Kahn. You want to fight? You want to do a first to five? You want to do this? You want to do that? And then you start learning together. And then that person learns from you. You learn from them without even sharing secret tech with one another on, on how to how to beat each other. You guys just learn by playing. So, yeah, I completely agree with that. Well, you got to make sure you find the right rival, too. That's one of That's the things true. I do with my community is I make sure to match people up. I'm like, you should probably play with that guy. Yeah. Don't play these guys. It's not going to be good for you. Uh, play with that guy. So uh, it is important to have a rival because mm -hmm. that's how you can see your progress. Yeah. Um, but it's important to have a rival at, around your skill level uh, because, you know, you mentioned, yeah, you do a first to 10 with the guy and you lose 10 and 0. And then the next first to 10, you win one to nine and then two to, to eight and what have you. But I remember I did uh, a first to 100 with a well-known fucking legendary oh, yeah. Marvel that. versus Capcom player. Yeah, I did a first to 100. It was just casually. And uh, I, I won, I think, 20 of those matches. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it didn't matter how many first to tens we did because he just kept, he just kept getting better too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. So, um, my, my question right now is for like the, the, the newer players, uh, uh, also my students, um, for anyone watching this video, uh, I understand like right now, uh, there is a big, um, debate pretty much on, um, so everybody wants to get better, right? And we are explaining on actually how to get better at the game. Now, we realize that there's a lot of people in, you know, within the FGC and not in the FGC of, you know, MK11 um, are talking about gimmicks versus fun, like fundamentals and skill level. Do you think there is a disconnect or do you think they kind of like share like two sides of the same coin when it comes to MK11? Gimmicks are try hard shit. Like, if you keep games down to fundamentals, like, really, like, the, the whole thing, okay, you want to know the secret to not losing? Th this is like hands down mm -hmm. the secret to not losing. I, I guarantee you, if you do this, you will never ever lose. And what it is, is you don't get hit. Um, if they do not hit you, you cannot lose. It is impossible. Yep. You could get a draw, but if they don't hit you, you cannot lose. Mm -hmm. And People complicate it. They're like, okay, but I got to block here and I got to do that. And I'm like, no, just walk backwards sometimes. And then, you know, stop walking backwards when you get close to a wall because then you can't walk backwards anymore. Exactly. Maybe try to find a way to get around him. And then as long as you just walk backwards, he can never hit you. Duck the projectile, walk backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I got to walk forwards. Okay, and if you just keep it that fucking simple, who gives a fuck? And that's when the Eureka moment worked when, when you know, referencing my buddy Mike Watson. And I was like, that's how he fucking did it. Yeah. yeah. And that's the secret. Half the time, every pro player, every fucking fighting game teacher, they always say, oh, just D up, man. They'll hang themselves, right? Yeah. You can always spot a bad player because they will hang themselves. Yeah. All I do is I walk backwards where you cannot hit me and then I block. And then you're going to do some dumb shit. I'm going to uppercut you for a crushing blow. You're going to say, this game is cheap. This is scrubby tactics. You don't know how to play. This is MK11 is for fucking children. This game is awful. And I don't yeah. give a fuck because you did something stupid and I uppercutted you and I won. And you can tell your friends that this game is bad. But the reality is that you are bad because you just let me hit you. And yeah. I didn't let you hit me. Yeah, and, and that goes back to the uh, um, a video. One of the first videos I did for this channel was the um, how to get out of a poke war. And a lot of people, when you get poked for the down one, what is everyone's sentiment on what to do? Down poke back. But a lot of the times is that um, actually Slayer covered this on his channel too. Is that if you block it and walk backwards, I guarantee you like more than half of them is going to whiff that. So go right back to what you said, just walk back, wait for them to press a button. There's your punish. And if you're getting stuck, stuck in a corner, find a way around it, duck the projectiles, make sure you just don't get touched, which is 
you know, probably the best, you know, advice you can actually give any new player. But um, a lot of the times, like, people I mean, are saying... Literally, literally, people would improve so much more. Yeah. Is anytime you're not doing a combo, just walk backwards. And uh -huh. then when you land a combo and you get that knockdown, walk to right where their up three would whiff and then start walking backwards again. Mm -hmm. And you're just gonna, you're just gonna win. I'm yep. telling you, like, that's so <laughs> that it works. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people have been, been coming to me, uh, like, it, through DMs and stuff. And uh, y'all know who you are, so I appreciate you guys. Um, they've been saying that a lot of the times that uh, they, what what they're not liking when they go up in MK11. Now, keep in mind, when you go in into a tournament, pools, of course, they're going to use these gimmicks. Like, if you're going to Champions of the Realm or whatever, and you're not even in, like, you know, like, the high brackets, like, the top 16 or maybe even top 30s, like, in pools, they want to conserve as much energy as they can, so they are going to use these gimmicks. Like, for example, I, we all know, uh, well, Deadly Rebel, okay? He didn't use his collector against me. He used spawn, and he used a very zoning spawn which was understandable because it was the very it was our very first match in champions of the realm and it's something to consider is that it's not that they want to piss you off it's not because they want to you know win with you know weird mechanics or like you know stupid scrubby mechanics it's not that at all is that they're conserving themselves but you also need to learn is that if if zoning is like i can say zoning is my biggest weakness right because i am too impatient i get bored it's something i myself as a player need to work on but if you cannot get around those kind of things then that is the one thing you absolutely need to work on am i correct i think what you what you should do if you're having trouble with a specific play style is just play it so by nature okay here's the funny thing this is the funny thing. You guys in the MK community know me for my flashy, aggressive, unga bunga, wild ass kung lao play, right? <coughs> kung lao. I play one of I play one of the most aggressive, one of the most obnoxious offense place or offensive based uh, characters. Mm -hmm. And the historically, I'm known as being like the biggest fucking turtley zony bitch in SoCal. And the thing is, like, I my specialty and what I'm good at is defense. Mm -hmm. And so when I play zoning characters, yeah, people really don't like it. And they get very, very surprised. They're like, wait, you know how to do this? And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I used to do. But I was like, eh, I don't really like this play style. Like, I'm good at it. But I don't really have fun beating everybody's ass like this. So, uh -huh. like... I'm going to learn, you know, this. And so with MK11, I was like, fuck it. I'm made in Kung Lao, dude. We're going to go crazy. We're going to get wild and out of control. And now bringing that zony, defensive, turtley, bitch-ass play style to an aggressive character yeah. has actually made me very, very well-rounded. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to be playing a character whose strengths are offense, whereas my strength is defense. So I can sit there and be very, very offensive, but not leave a whole lot of openings. And that throws a lot of people off because Kung Lao is a very, very unsafe character. Generally, how you deal with Kung Lao is you wait for him to overextend, block, blow his ass up in return with the punish. Uh, and then when they don't get any punishes on me and they're like, fuck, dude, how do I beat this guy? He's hitting me for like 10 damage, yeah. period. He's like getting down threes and sweeps and not doing any damage. And yet he is so ahead. And I'm like, yeah, man, it's because I'm kind of a bitch ass when I play. I'm kind of a turtle. Um, so when you're struggling with certain play styles, I would say to take up that play style. Thank you. And bring Thank your you. own spin to it. I struggled with people just kind of rushing me down, right? As a zoning, turtley, bitch ass player, mm -hmm. I would get mad when some fucking gorilla would unga bunga <laughs> mix me all day, right? I would get pissed. So I learned how to do it. And I'm like, oh. This isn't so bad. And what it did was it made me really fucking obnoxious as a zoner. Like, people are like, God damn, are you going to do – how many mid shots are you going to do with RoboCop? Like, how many of those motherfuckers am I blocking? And I'm like, you're blocking all of them. You're yeah. blocking all of them, god damn it. Yep. And and it's funny because um, this was the very first video too. If 
you're getting beat up by somebody you do not like, a, a character you do not like, that you are complaining about, that makes you want to go to Twitter and say nerf this character about, pick up that character. Lab, no, not lab, but main that, like, as if you're going to main that character. If, if like, Katana's fan flutter is pissing you off, use Katana. Practice that fan flutter because then you'll know... I mean, th this is what I like to do personally, oh. is that I learn the animations and I'm just like, oh, if I'm playing against a katana, I know the I know what they're going to do next. So then I don't well, have to do anything. Yeah, I think we got to be careful in saying that, though. Oh, yeah, because I, for a beginner, okay, for a beginner and an intermediate player, yes, absolutely. If you're getting your ass kicked by something, then... Um, absolutely like level your shit up go play yeah. that character learn the matchup but i do think that with the mortal kombat community specifically and this isn't really a, a problem i find in other fighting games but mortal kombat specifically mm -hmm. okay there's a certain level of skill where like you just gotta take it or leave it and instead of bitching and complaining about nerfs and buffs, you need to take a long, hard look at to whether or not you even should be fucking with that game. And I think yes. that's a question a lot of people should ask first. It's like, dude, if all you're doing is bitching about every fucking mechanic, like maybe you just don't like MK11. Why are you not playing MKX or Injustice 2? If those are the games, if all you're doing is saying, oh, well, this was better in Injustice, well, then why? There's a lot of people saying that, but yet why is it it takes me 20 minutes to get a game in Injustice 2? Why is it I try to look and see who's streaming Injustice 2? It's a fucking NRS community's a bitch, okay? Because you fucking look at every other community, and I can tell you now, people are fucking playing Third Strike. People are streaming Marvel vs. Capcom 2. There's communities around these old-ass games that are allegedly superior. People don't sit there and play Street Fighter V or Tekken 7 if they prefer Tekken Dark Resurrection. They just play <laughs> Dark Resurrection. <laughs> yeah. But and why doesn't the NRS community do that before trying to lab anything? If all you're doing is bitching about the game and not having fun, then maybe you don't need to lab anything. Maybe you just need to find a different fighting game. And thank you so much for converting into our, our next controversial topics for our newer players and for people that watch, you know, my show who uh, watch your stream too, is that there's been a message that I've been trying to get out, but I like, you already know, Badger, we've known each other for a while. I'm a little too nice to say is that there's a problem with, you know, especially with our, you know, our, our, you know, above average players too is that it seems to me that it's always when we, when someone loses really badly to somebody or they get completely outplayed that they have to complain about that character rather than what they did wrong through their match. And why do you think uh, that is? Depends on the character, but honestly, there are certain characters that you lost a character select. Like, like for like if for there's example, a Cetrion on screen and you're not it. Oh yeah, then yeah, dude, you <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> you fucked up, bro. Yeah, but I, what I'm saying is, is like, um, I I realize like, okay, so my main character is Liu Kang. I love playing with Liu Kang, right? So my thing is, is that I don't use forward four a lot. That's mainly just my my whiff punishing tool. Um, but I realize that that is like I realize when I hear people talk you know crap about my character that when they lose right they like to go to that four four broken scenario or that excuse but main thing i was doing was back one back one two four into a command grab down one into command grab but all they saw was a four four now do you think that a lot of these you know quote unquote complaining scrubby players tend to tend to listen too much of the negatives of what other people are saying and try to incorporate it into their own gameplay. Like the YouTube warriors, the one who just listens to a pro player talk about a certain character and then like, yeah, he's oh, right. I think those people are just kind of like, I have a word for those. It's bitch ass. And that, <laughs> that behavior is bitch assfulness. Right? Bitch assfulness. Because um, they're full of being a bitch ass. Here's the deal. If Liu Kang's forward four was so goddamn good and you really wanted to win, then you would have done that shit. Over and over again. Prove it. 
Not you, not you, Kiala. I'm talking to the guy complaining. Oh, if yeah. Forward four is so goddamn good. Why aren't you picking Liu Kang and doing forward four mm -hmm. to blow up Kiala? Well, I don't want to do that. Well, then you don't want to win, so shut up. Yeah, exactly. If it's so fucking good. Oh, 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 you don't think it's that fucking good. Well, then lab how to beat it and quit whining. If it's yeah. so fucking good, use it. If it's not so fucking good that you have to use it, and that's where I go back to with pe some people need to just fucking quit the game. Okay? Yeah. Because if something is so good that you'd be stupid to not do it, then you are stupid for not doing it. Now, if you're not doing it because you don't like it, then that means you don't like the game. If you don't like fucking with fucking Cetrion, Right, you hate fighting that matchup, then you do not like Mortal Kombat 11. That is the game. That's what is in there now. I don't care about patches. I don't care about shit that may never come. They have not nerfed Cetrion since the game's release. Right, Jackie, the most nerf, or Garrus, the most nerfed character, is still fucking stupid to fight. Right, like yep. th this is the game. This is Mortal Kombat 11. You just don't like it. Because if that if Liu Kang's forward four was that fucking good, right? And people are like, well, maybe I don't want to win that much. Okay, well, then maybe you need to stop complaining about not winning so much. Because if you really wanted to win, you'd be using whatever it is you thought was the cheap shit. That's what the fuck the pros do, okay? Yep. That's where the tier lists come from. People are like, oh, yeah, let me look at a tier list. Why the fuck do you think that tier list has any value? Because somebody went and found the cheap shit for you mm -hmm. and then put it in a colorful rainbow colored list so you can figure it out without having to put in the work. But those pro players are not going into a tournament with something that if there's $30,000 on the line, what the fuck does Sonic Fox do for a living? Does Sonic Fox have a job? I don't think so. So if there's $30,000 on the line, Sonic Fox has to fucking win. And if I if I had to win $30,000, you best believe I'm picking fucking Cetrion. I'm doing the cheap shit. I'm going to YOLO my way to $30,000. You can suck my dick. <laughs> so at the end of the day, what are your priorities? Yep. Do you want the $30,000 that Sonic Fox gets? Okay, well, then you probably need to pick a top tier. You don't want that $30,000 that Sonic Fox gets, then you should probably stop complaining about those that are trying. Yep. And and, and it goes back to the notion that, like, uh, I think a lot of people are getting uh, a little um, mixed up when it comes down to, like, you think any, like, if someone is winning with Jackie or Cetrion or Joker or any of these top tier characters, you really think they care when they, when, uh, when they beat you and you, say things like oh you're 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 winning with scrubby tie even even with the uh that podcast between uh tom brady and uh, titanium tigers about the whole shiva thing like he says i do it because it's funny why is it funny not because i'm bullying you not because i want to make you have a bad day it's because i'm using a mechanic that is stupid that is stupid good and it's making me win tournaments it's getting me placements because people just think like, oh, this is going to be like a, a, a MK11 is going to be like a Street Fighter V thing or like a Tekken 7 thing where like, oh, the read, that that was a crazy ass read. He's going to full combo. Blah, blah, blah. That, that is not even half of what pro MK11 is all about. It's about knowing the gimmicks and knowing what works. Because when you know it works, you're going to use it. And you're going to use it a lot. And that's what uh, Titanium Tigers did. But everybody else wants to say, oh, Shiva is a problem. That's not the point. The point is, she she may be a problem to you. But to that pro player, it's working. Because when that money's on the line, and we know how big those pots are, Badger. We know how big those pots are online and offline. They're going to use it. Why do you think we saw so many garrises on uh, uh, on the first year of MK11 at Combo Breaker? It's because he worked. Why do you think? Well, why do you think Sonya won? Uh, Scar Sonya won Cowboy Breaker because if it worked. So I mean, like, yeah, and I think a lot of it is just fucking jealousy and like, I you know, so a lot of people are like, yo, why can't my character? Why is it? You know, because at the beginning of a game, everybody picks a character, right? Everybody's like, I like this guy. I want to be that guy. Fighting games are different from other kinds of games. Okay, if I Call of Duty comes out and I'm like, yo, I want to pick the shotgun. 
there's like 50 fucking shotguns, right? And mm -hmm. it may be I don't like the shotgun. I can quickly go to the assault rifle. It doesn't take fucking that long to learn the difference between an assault rifle and a shotgun. Whereas in a fighting game, like if I want to learn jacks, it's going to take a while to learn jacks. Yeah. If is. I find out that jacks is not good, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Because like I spent a month learning jacks and, and he's not good. And so a lot of this hating comes from it's like man fuck dude i wish i got lucky and picked the good character mm -hmm. there's only so many hours in the day right yep. there's only i can't learn every, well i mean i did learn every character but i don't have a fucking life or anything better to do than to play mortal Kombat on my fucking birthday too right <laughs> so like yeah not everybody's gonna be me some people uh -huh. are like shit dude i can put in time for one fucking character why did that have to be the character that ended up sucking and so mm -hmm. They're mad at the players that got lucky. It's kind of like people that are mad at rich people. It's like, oh, the fucking one percent. They were born rich. Like that's not fair. It's institutional and blah blah blah. It's like, it's like, but well, you're your own person. You're not mad at that. Yeah, you're, you're mad like, at yourself for not, mad at not going you're, there. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. You don't know that guy. You don't know the one percent. You never fucking yeah. met them. I mean, I'm sure Donald Trump is friends with somebody, right? Like yeah. he's got some friends. I'm sure somebody yeah. likes hanging around with the guy. So like you don't know these people, you're just mad that they got something that you couldn't and never, maybe never will. And I think that's where a lot of that frustration comes from. Is it's just mm -hmm. fuck, dude. Like I don't have 20 hours a day to spend on Mortal Kombat to learn every fucking character. I only I work, dude. I got kids. I got fucking five bitches over here that are about to give me a fucking conga line of blowjobs. Do you think I have time for Mortal Kombat today? No, I'm busy and on the go. <laughs> So oh, yeah, I get it. I get the hate and the frustration. And to those people at the end of the day, I say, well, maybe it's just not the fucking game for you. Like if you, yeah. cause me, I love the game so much that I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna learn every fucking character. I don't fucking care. This shit is fun. I'm having a blast. Yeah. And at high level, I do think, you know, the game fucking degenerates and gets stupid, but I just fucking don't play that shit. I think Fujin is fucking dumb. I don't play it. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not in a tournament. I don't give a shit. I'm trying to enjoy myself. I'm a casual player. Like I said, yeah. Remember that I consider myself a casual. Mm -hmm. And so I try to speak for the casual audience. Like, I don't fucking care about tournaments or any of that. I don't compete in online tournaments. I only compete in offline. I think online tournaments are fraudulent and I don't respect any online tournament results. I just don't win that shit without lag. Win that shit without lag. Well, there was no lag. Well, give me a guarantee. Only online does that. So when you play at the level that I do and you just don't give a shit, like you're not going to tolerate any Ooh. of that stuff. So don't play the game that you don't like. Ooh. Okay. You sick of fighting Cetrion? Then fucking nut up and be a man about it and say, yo, I duck Cetrion. I fucking admit it to the world. I'm like, I duck Fujin. You can say whatever the fuck you want. I don't have fun playing that matchup. I do not enjoy it. I don't think that it's a fair matchup for me. And I don't have any money on the line. So I don't give a shit if you think I'm a bitch. Because I will school your ass with every other character but Fujin. Yeah. But I'll admit, you probably got me with that shit. I can say that you're carried by Fujin. Pick a different character, all right? We could sit here and do the insult game all day. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I'm not playing a game I don't like. And I suggest everyone else do the same. Yeah. And and that's funny because um, on my personal stream, uh, I realize a, a lot of people are, are realizing that how come I'm not streaming MK11 as much? Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not playing the game. It's just that I've come to fruition with myself is that maybe competing in MK11 is not for me. But I still love Mortal Kombat. I still like playing MK11 with, you know, with, with, with my friends, even my high-level friends. Like, I'll play with Zork. I'll play with Burr. I'll, I'll play with all of them because, like, I love playing with them and I love playing the game. But it's just the fact of competing right now... Um, as everybody already know, that I live in Hawaii. It is really hard for me to connect to anyone. So I can't really, you know, go into like tournaments with a 120 ping and, and feel okay with it. So my thing is, is that- I, if, There's probably eight <laughs> people in your whole state that are willing to go to an offline. Yes, and, and, exactly. Like I, and I, three I miss of them have to take a boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like my thing is, is that when people, they say, oh, I want to compete. I want to do this. I want to do that. Um. That's fine, but um, this goes back to I, I think it was um who 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 is a guest on on the uh the the Rio podcast that talked about this what was his name uh Dab 
right? Yeah. Okay. So Dab, he said, now these are his words, not mine. I'm just relaying it to your viewers, my viewers, and for the new the newer players. Um, when this game isn't taken seriously as a competitive game, if you're not taking this game competitively, like this, like seriously competitive, then you're fine. That this game should be played as how you know Badger and I are are pretty much taking it. Play it because you're having fun with it. Play with it. Like, you don't give a shit. Oh, well, kind of. Okay, so the thing is, you need to play the game you want to play. And the game I want to play is competitive, high-level, high-stakes, sweaty, fucking Mortal Kombat 11 offline. Mm -hmm. That does not exist. We live in a pandemic. I do not get to play the game I want to play. Okay, so I'm, I'm not saying anything anti-competitive. But I am not going to compete in this game online. It has nothing to do with the game. It has everything to do with the laws of physics. Yep. Uh, until somebody can invent a way for light to travel around the planet at 60 frames per second, which right now light travels across the globe seven times in one second. That's the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Seven times in one second. You're trying to tell me that the best, most optimal connection between me and another person on another side of the world is seven frames per second? Get the fuck out of here. I ain't fucking with that. Now, Rollback and GGPO makes the games work and function as if they're not at seven frames per second. Games with delay-based netcode, just pause. Just pause. It, that's delay. It just pause the game. Mm -hmm. Wait for it to catch up, right? Yep. But <laughs> offline, we don't have any of that shit. We don't have any good, of it. You win. And so I think people need to look at what game they want to play. And I don't think anyone should ever say, I want to play competitive. I think that's the wrong mindset. I think you're setting yourself up for failure. You will yeah. always lose and you will always be pissed off about it. Don't yeah. ever play a game because you want to be competitive. Okay. You play the game because you enjoy the game. You enjoy the game. Yep. Then by playing that game so fucking much, because you love that game so much, you play it so fucking much, you will eventually become competitive. You will just get so good that you're like, and that's how I got started. I got. I just kept blowing people up at Soul Calibur 2 and fucking all these arcade fighting games. Just blow everybody up at the arcade, and it's like, fuck, dude, I'm not having fun with this anymore, man. Nobody can win against me, and this shit was fun when I couldn't win, but now that all I do is win, I'm not having fun. I need to find people that'll make me lose. Yes, you want that challenge. So if you're not going from the mindset of I just want to play and have fun because this game is fun, and already you have lost. Quit yep. fucking chasing esports. Quit chasing the money and the dreams. Okay, that, Sonic Fox that. Look, and Dragon. Exactly what he's saying. Dragon didn't get into fucking injustice because Dragon thought, oh man, I could be rich and famous. No, Dragon just fucking loved playing injustice. He's like, yo, this is the fucking shit. I, I can't get enough of this game. Fuck, I'm beating all of my friends because I'm having too much fun and they don't play it as much as I do. So mm -hmm. they're not as good as me. I got to find people as good as me. Holy shit, there's a tournament scene. Oh, God damn. That's how you've got to Ta -da. Your mindset is, I want to be competitive. You've already lost. Your mindset should be, I want to fucking play more. Like, somebody give me some games. I don't give a shit. Somebody fight me. I want to go. Yep. Let's do it. Yep. And, 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 that's, and that's what I adore about your channel, is that he has the, uh, the, the, um, the, the beef set league. And it's just everybody just wanting. Because, like, what Badger is doing is pretty damn smart. Because he... Because him and and like all these other like you know streamers that do the like these like they stream these exhibitions, they make these sets to the point where it's just like hey you me let's go because it makes you want to play the game, and it, even when you lose they're just like oh, I'll get you next time you little shit like it makes you want to come back into the game and get and play better and have fun with it, because if you don't have a goal in mind when you're when you're playing a game other than having fun, then it's not going to work out for you. And that was my problem. My problem was, is like, I want to be Hollywood. I want to be this. I want to be on the brackets. You know, I, I want to be everywhere. But it, that wasn't the point. I realized I had more fun and having a connection when just streaming, playing MK11, playing with friends, getting the voice chat, you know, talk shit to each other, ha have a few laughs. I had m more of a time playing better, having fun with it and having laughs with it rather than 
you know, waking up at, at six in the morning because we all know Hawaii's time zone versus everyone else for freaking uh esl or you know champions of the realm like on tuesday like tuesday mornings for me or whatnot and then just sitting there completely freaking miserable taking like you know drinking my coffee and waiting for and waiting for my set to happen i'm not having fun i have anxiety that's what i have and if it's giving you anxiety you should stop playing because a video game should not give you this much panic especially mk11 I mean, I sit here and I think about my life. It's again, I, I mentioned it earlier. It's literally my birthday. I am at work, sort of like my part time gig. I literally fucking play Mortal Kombat for money on my birthday. Dude, that's the dopest shit. Okay, like people need to stop complaining and stop being like whiny bitches about, it. especially streamers, dude. Streamers are the fucking worst. They're so embarrassing. Like I get embarrassed to fucking tell people that I do this shit for a living because most streamers are so goddamn trash and they don't fucking understand what a fucking blessing. Dude, there's people that come, they come and look for me, right? Mm -hmm. They look for me and they're like, I want to play Mortal Kombat with that guy. And I'm going to give him five dollars uh -huh. that's the coolest shit it in is. the world how can you not shit. how can you not think that that's the coolest shit and sit there and whine and it's like dude i don't care who your favorite chump ass streamer is i don't care who it is you like dude if you go on twitter and they're just sitting there and whining and bitching and i'm like why the fuck are you playing this game dude like this is no longer fun this is a job and nobody wants a job and like do you wonder why you don't have any viewers it's because nobody wants to watch you at work yeah you know go to somebody's job go to mcdonald's watch the people making fries is that fun mm. no <laughs> it's work <laughs> shit's not fun you know and like why is my stream i need to stop playing mortal kombat no you you need to start playing a game that you're having fun with because yeah. i have a fucking blast with this fucking game I don't yeah. give a shit. My shit's competitive. I put money on the line. There's money in my tournament. People, I fucking pay the fucking scrubs that go and just come on stream and lose, right? Yeah. Like, I pay those assholes. Nobody even pays those fucking people. But I'm like, hey, I'm going to commentate this shit. I'm going to make fun of you for being bad at this game. So all the least I can give you do is give you two bucks, you know, as a, as a going away present. Yeah. Um, so, like, I just, people need to just, like, have fun with the game. If you're not having fun then try to have find a way to make the game fun. And I don't see why the MK community doesn't do that. Look at Overwatch, dude. People are like, Overwatch fucking sucks. I hate competitive Overwatch. Fucking GOATS team, fuck this shit. You know what? I'm going to go into fucking Overwatch fucking arcade mode and make up weird yeah. ass. Yeah, dude, we're going to invent Attack on Titan. And all you're one <laughs> Reinhardt who's a giant, and we're all Genjis. There's five of us, and we're going to play Attack on Titan in Overwatch. And I'm like, why doesn't the NetherRealm community do that shit? Shit, right why yeah. don't we just fucking okay you don't like fatal blow then let's just play a game with no fatal blows right yeah is the game better now is it better when you don't have fatal blows did that fix it because nothing is stopping you from with your in your friend group or your community there's a lot of people bitching about fatal blow online i can go on twitter right now and find about <laughs> 10 people so why the fuck dude there's no money on the line there's no tournaments we play got canceled Okay, so like, okay, in pro comp, do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. But when you're not in pro comp, okay, just ban fatal blow. See, see if it makes the game better. Why, why deny yourself that? Yeah. And if it does make the game better, record some videos, post it on YouTube, and say, hey, look at how much fun we're having without fatal blow. But nobody's yeah. doing that. This is going on Twitch and going on Twitter, and they're saying, yeah, man, wake ups are scrubby. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, is there an answer to wake ups? Is there something you can do? And they're like, well, I could do this, but then they do that. Okay, stop. If there was something you could have done, then, then yeah. you should have done that. And, and they're like, and but, that's, but and that's then great. they could. And that's great because we have a lot, we have, you know, quite a few people. Like, I, I, I think uh, V Baby V and uh, uh, Rock and Polos, like, what they're doing, they have the brutality bowl that the only, only time that, you know, you can actually uh, consider a win or, 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 you know, get a win under your belt. While playing while while playing MK11 is that if you end with a brutality that that that's their whole shtick, and also too like uh survive combats on Saturdays is that everybody has a certain amount of health, right? It's a king of the hill, uh you know format, and like if you win, and that the person you just fought like took half your your health bar, if you didn't do like a brutality or fatality or whatnot, you're gonna win only like you know a certain amount of health back. But not a full bar. You're not resetting your health bar. That 
that that's like a actual like a uh what is it called like a um survival survival yeah yeah exactly survival, right? yeah, yeah a survival thing and i think that's cool i Dude, think he survived compact <laughs> yeah <laughs> Come on, Kiala. I know. Work with us here. I know. It's the morning. But yeah, but that's so what I'm saying. Like, like people need to do some more is, stuff with it. When you do all that shit, right? When you're mm -hmm. doing this weird-ass brutality bowl bullshit or whatever survival dumb shit, right? Whatever dumb shit you're doing. When you do that dumb shit, are you not having fun? Yes. And the well, answer is yes, because you keep doing it, right? You wouldn't keep doing it if it wasn't fun. So that's why I think that these people are just bitch asses when they're like, MK11 is not fun. And I'm like, really? Because, like, these people are having a lot of fun with MK11. Yeah, but that's not how the game's supposed to be played. Oh, really? Who's How is this game supposed to be played? Who determines that? Yeah. And whatever event you're competing in determined how it will be played. If you don't enter that tournament, you don't have to play by their rules. Yep. So, fuck it, dude. We're going to teabag everybody. We're going to fucking teabag in the middle of matches. We're going to give no respect for playing honorably. We're only going to give you respect if you play toxic. Right? We're going to do all kinds of fun shit because it's funny. Mortal Kombat's a fucking meme game. And we're not yeah. in any tournament. There's no evolution. There's no uh, pro comp. Like the, the, unless you're in it, it doesn't matter. So who fucking cares? So quit bitching. If the game's not fun, quit playing it. Yeah. If there's a way to make the game fun, play it that way. Yeah. Have fun. Who fucking cares, man? Like The only people that should care are the people that are legitimately making a living off of this in that yeah. aspect okay but nobody is because i talked i spoke earlier i said you know what does sonic fox do for a living what is sonic fox's job it's mortal Kombat player but mm -hmm. how much money do you think sonic fox even wins from tournaments i'm pretty sure it's a very small amount of yeah. their income from tournaments so even the people who are the most successful at tournaments don't even fucking give a shit about the money from tournaments as much Sonic Fox is more active on YouTube and Twitch streaming and making videos and content creating mm -hmm. than tournaments. So if you're trying to get like try hard fucking sweat tastic, I want to be esports, then really you shouldn't be fucking with tournaments anyways. You should be doing content creation. Yep. That's where the fucking tournament people are making their money. That's how they're coming up. That's where all the clout is. People fucking, I haven't won a major in my entire fucking life. I've won tournaments, I've won locals, I've won small tournaments, but you've never seen me win CEO. I've never won an evolution. Nobody fucking gives a fuck. And yet, oh, look, I got 3,000 followers on Twitch. Yeah. There's fucking, you know, I get up to 30 people. I used to have 100 people watching me. Mm -hmm. People are like, fuck, how did you do that? And I'm like, because I don't, you, you never won a tournament. And I'm like, yeah, because it's not important. People got their priorities fucked up. That's the issue. There, the Jack, real issue you hear is that? people have Everyone at home watching this video, did you hear that? He never. He says, "I never want to tournament, but I don't give a fuck. I'm having fun playing the game. I'm having fun, and when I'm having fun, people are like, I don't want to watch work. I want to watch fun. I want to watch a party. They come to my channel. They see I'm having fun. I'm fucking stoned off my ass. I'm telling jokes. We're fucking. We got goofy ass emotes and memes. We're just having a blast, and we don't fucking give a shit." And like my channel is growing faster than like most of the people that are tryharding in pro comp and combat league and posting all this goofy ass esoteric tech sure, on their yeah. fucking YouTube channel once a fucking two months. Yeah. It's like you posted one fucking like reset six months ago, a 30 second clip of one reset six months ago. And you're wondering why nobody fucking gives a shit about you. Yeah. So like, now to, to kind of close out with, uh, you know, these controversial topics that i kind of wanted to talk with you personally but i figure why not put it on on our streams so um there was a video that um uh, that a, a lot of people already know uh the, two of these people's names uh real mk tom brady he talked about or i think Rio, i think rio did too talked about was streaming a, a pro mk11 tournament right he was watching it and uh he fell asleep now people are kind of like saying like oh yeah mk11 is getting to that point where like it's boring to watch or we're falling asleep now before we get into that though there it reminded me of an experience that i had when i watched an injustice 2 tournament i know it's completely different but it was sonic fox's captain cold versus hayate's robin and all i saw was batterings and <laughs> and snow globe I, and i fell asleep but what 
like what well, I, I want to know your take because I'm pretty sure a lot of people at home would, would like to know, you know, Soka Honey Badger's view on, you know, Waz falling asleep and people agreeing that it is, you know, boring to watch or, or you know, the sleep factor of watching it. Like, what, what, what is your take on that, actually? First of all, we need to establish context within the situation in order to understand anything. Okay, isn't Waz from fucking Australia? That's true. Yeah. Like, isn't there a time zone thing? Wouldn't it? Like, maybe it's like four in the morning for him, and he was. Just yeah, that's tired. what I said too. Yeah, but like, maybe, but, but once that video came out, that. a lot of people started like like start putting in their input by saying yes mk11 is getting They're boring bitches, to watch dude. yeah yeah you find it boring so why are you watching it my thing would be okay if waz was tired then y'all need to just shut up if yeah. waz was actually bored then why the fuck is he watching a mortal Kombat tournament why the fuck is that your stream if that's what you're going to show to the world is you being bored with Mortal Kombat. Like, I guess that's cool for like a five second clip that you can find on Twitter to give a hot take. But I don't know that I'd want to watch that for an hour and a half. Right. Yeah. So why the fuck is he? Why? Why is why is he even doing that? If he fucking finds the game bored, boring. I don't think that's the case. Because if that's the case, then Waz is a fucking sellout, okay? If you're only streaming Mortal Kombat 11 for your fucking income, then you're a sellout, and I'm not scared to say it, okay? Quit being a bitch. Go play a game you do like, so you will be happy, and then hopefully you'll make some fucking money. I want nothing but success for you, but quit being a sellout bitch. If you fucking hate Mortal Kombat, stop streaming it. Just don't. It's better for you. It's so You'll be so much happier. I'm going to talk shit and, and name you know people fucking dirty names and shit, but I, that's because I think that that's funny. But really, at the deep down of it, I have your best interests in mind, even though I'm talking mm -hmm. shit. It's called tough love, right? Yeah. It's tough love. I want you to be happy. Quit being a bitch and playing games that you don't like, you sell out piece of shit. Okay? That's the first thing I would say under that context. Okay. okay? Under the context of he was too tired, I'm like, cut him some slack, man. He's tired. He's in Australia. It fucking happens. I've fucking, I've been exhausted and almost fallen asleep on stream before too. I've never been so exhausted that I have fallen asleep, but I've been that fucking tired. Streaming is, you know, it's not, it's not as relaxing as you would think. And especially at that hour for some people, yeah, dude, he probably fell asleep because he was tired. But if he fell asleep because he was bored, then he's a sellout bitch and he shouldn't be fucking with it, man. Just be happy. Do some shit you like. Yeah. And and that's was, the way I look because that's that's kind of how like how we met because um like the first time meeting him I was just like you know this guy's cool this guy's energetic now go and also too going back to the whole like falling asleep while watching MK11 being played is that when you have people like enthusiastic and very you know entertaining such as you know the streamers like you know like at World Television like um like yourself and like uh, uh what, what's his name oh yeah for champions of the realms like you have destroyer and you have caboose and they are like the the power couple right there you you hear them yelling you hear them screaming you you, you hear them make jokes you, like you, you hear them swearing and they're loud it keeps you awake it makes you want to watch the game even if it's something so minuscule like like a micro duck like i know you said in a video before you know why people like blow up micro ducks like that's a that, that's a a regular thing but the reason why it's an entertaining to see is because the commentator is is giving the hype to it i mean because that wasn't of the fact me that complained about micro ducks that was tom brady and i got an issue with that state oh yeah yeah that's right that's right he says that micro ducks and shimmies aren't exciting that's just basic shit and i'm like dude fuck off like tom brady i'm a fan okay but i'm gonna tell you to fuck off first <laughs> of all because if that shit isn't exciting then you just don't like the game you shouldn't be playing it okay yeah because micro ducks are exciting because of the risk reward dog if you micro duck on a kung lao and you were wrong and i hit you with that forward one do you realize what i will do to you you know how bad your day has just got so if you are ballsy enough to fucking micro duck against Liu kang or jackie or fucking kung lao if you're ballsy enough to sit there and do like a shimmy on sub-zero with an advancing back dash Basically, his back dash goes forward, and you're going to fucking walk into that, and you're going to ballsily go and approach. Fuck, dude, that's impressive to me. I find that exciting. I find it exciting because I understand the risk-reward ratio in the game mm -hmm. that makes those plays so fucking cool. So if you don't find that shit cool, Mortal Kombat 11 is not the game for you. You shouldn't fucking play it. Quit being a sellout piece of shit. Play a game you like. You'll make more money elsewhere. Okay? You will make far more money 
making content playing League of Legends with a smile on your face than you will ever make playing Mortal Kombat with a frown. Yep. And, 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 that, that, and that's funny because like the very first the very first words Badger has ever said to me that kind of ignited the friendship was that I was like, hey, Badger, how do you deal with zony bitches? And his words to me, his exact words was, be a zony bitch. You zony bitch? Because most zoners in this game are shit at it, dude. Like, coming from the guy who I just revealed to you guys that, like, I'm more of a zoner. So when I see people zoning in this game, I'm like, dude, this guy is awful. Let me rush him down with fucking Robocop. <laughs> Let me fucking get in there and do some retarded shit, right? Some so straight up autistic fucking gameplay. And I'm going to beat this guy and show you he's the one. He's the one that doesn't know oh, what the yeah. fuck they're doing. And then they want a bitch, right? If I win with Robocop, it doesn't matter that I hit you with 10 command grabs. I'm a bitch-ass zoner. For winning with RoboCop. It doesn't matter that I beat your ass with two touches off of 30% combos each, right? I won on a timeout because you kept backdashing at a health deficit and killed yourself. I won on a timeout with RoboCop, so I'm the zony bitch, even though you ran away from me and all I did was combos. But yeah, a lot of those people are fucking... I, I shit on zoners because most of them suck, okay? Yeah. I shit on people that complain about zoners because most of them suck at dealing with it. Right, I'm gonna shit on everybody, but at the end of the day, the best advice for dealing with zoners is zone the fucker back. Right, force him to rush you down. Okay, so he's really good at zoning, and apparently he's better at zoning than you are at rushing down. So why don't you just test him in his skill? Right, I'm not gonna play your game. You're gonna play my game. I wanna win. Fuck you. Right. Yeah. So you're zoning me out. Okay, what I'm gonna do, and this is how I beat every fucking zoner. I go in, I get the first touch. Right. All I gotta do is get that first touch. This guy is a bitch. He is not very good. If I get a health lead on him, I can drag this out, hold block for fucking 60 seconds and win. And there's nothing this guy can do about it. So that's what I'm going to do. I run in. I hit a quick fucking forward one, two, two hit combo. 90 damage does nothing. Dash in, grab him on, wake up. Okay, now I've got 20% on the board and I'm back dashing. And here's the projectiles. Okay, zoner, zone me. Because now <laughs> we're in a race. We're in a race. That clock is ticking. And I'm winning. And now you have to open me up. You have to rush me down. Yeah. And can you rush me down when I zone you back? Do you like it? Do you like it when I hit you with projectiles? As your health bar is depleting and I'm back dashing all the way to that fucking corner. And I'm going to win on fucking timeout because I don't give a shit. You're a zony piece of shit. And I wanted to show you that you're not good at this game. That's all you do. Nine times out of ten when you fight a zoner. Oh, you don't even need to switch characters. Just whatever character it is, get a quick light lead, start backdashing. Yep. Then that actually improves improves your neutral because then you're going to start seeing, okay, when I backdash, he tries to come in and cover that space by jumping. So instead of backdashing, I'm just going to dash forward, uppercut him, get a fucking down two combo, carry his ass with a full combo all the way to the corner, and then start backdashing again now that he's in the corner and I got all this room to work with. <laughs> the next thing you know, you have beaten every fucking zoner. Yep. That that is true. That is very true. I mean, like, and people are like, well, I don't want to do that. Well, then you don't want to win. You don't want to win. Why are you complaining about losing? Because they, they want to win <laughs> their way. Like they, they they want to have like a certain scenario in their head of how they want to win, which is they're imagining shit that doesn't exist. Most people in uh, gaming, they're very good uh, at fiction. That's why fan fiction and fan art and cosplay are so big, right? I can't make up my own shit, but I want to think that I can make up my own shit. So instead of making up my own shit, I'm just going to make up a costume of someone else's shit, right? Mm -hmm. You never see original character cosplay. And if you do, it doesn't really blow up, right? You just want to fucking make up some shit that doesn't exist and then hopefully like people will appreciate it so people just make up some winning scenarios right yeah, yeah man if i just hit this combo then you're fucking done and it's like well did you well no well then you didn't hit the combo and you lost yeah it's bullshit well was there a way you could have hit that combo yeah but then he could have okay well then you should stop right there there yeah. was a way you could have done it and you didn't do it yep and then you got blown up that's not your opponent's fault come on bro now, I can understand lag, right? It's like, dude, I fucking hate fighting Aaron Black online. That shit's obnoxious, yeah. right? And when I lose to an Aaron Black online, there's an asterisk. There's an asterisk. Okay, you beat me. It was online. I'm not holding that L. 
you can say what you want, but I'm not holding that L. Yep. But other than that, like, dude, if somebody did something and you did something else and their something beat your something, there's a word for that. It's a very simple out word. It's outplayed. That's it. You got outplayed. Yep. Try again next time. Do better again. People don't get mad when they get outplayed in Dark Souls, right? People will sit there and grind fucking Ornstein and Smog for 10 hours and die 50,000 times to Ornstein and Smog, and it's no big deal. It's just part of getting good. Why don't people do that shit in Mortal Kombat? Like, why is everybody such a fucking bitch, right? Like, dude, fucking Cetrion is Ornstein and Smog, okay? Do you want to get past Anna Orlando? You got to beat Ornstein and Smog. If you don't give a shit what happens after Anna Londo, then you don't give a shit about Ornstein and Smog. Go play another game. See, this is funny because I, I'm actually a, a, a Soulsborne fan. <laughs> so I know exactly I what mean, he's talking about. I think, uh, you know, within the realm of gaming, I mean, I, yeah. I try to keep context with stuff. Uh, you know, even if you're not into Dark Souls, if you're at a Mortal Kombat podcast, chances are you're uh, at, at least heavily invested in gaming. So I assume people are at least know what Dark Souls is, but if you're yeah. fucking old, like, okay, Ninja Gaiden from Super Nintendo, right? Like whatever hard yeah. game it is, just throw that in there. People seem to be okay with losing in hard games against the computer and not with losing in hard games against another person. What that comes down to is a lack of confidence and uh, self-esteem. Uh, so, you know, again, it goes back to the term bitch assfulness, which I do not tolerate and I will humiliate. That's just how I rock, right? I make fun of people that are bitch asses. And I see that it's, I, will, I don't want to say it's a generational thing. People want to say, oh, it's the Zoomers or it's the Millennials and blah, blah, blah. It's it's this generation, these players, you know, these MK11 players, they're, they're such pussies and bitch asses. And I'm like, it's not a generational thing. It's more of an era thing. We yeah. are in the era of bitch ass. I know some old fucking bitch asses. I know some dudes that are like 40 years old that still fucking whine like little bitches at fucking video games, okay? It's not the Zoomers. It's not the Millennials. There's some Boomers. There's some fucking old people that are bitches at fucking fighting games too, okay? Yeah. So we need to stop saying that it's like a generational thing of people that, oh yeah, those people that started with MK11, they're bitches. It's like, no, dude, I know tons of people that started with MK11 that are fucking good and they get it. And I know tons of people that never played a fighting game before and they started with MK11 and they have the same whiny bitch ass complaints as all these whiny bitch ass old people. Pretty sure they got it from those bitch ass old people. Yeah. So it's not a generational thing. Yeah. I, I I can agree with that. It, it's just like it comes down to the point where like um now I when I first started in the FGC in general, it started with Tekken. And it was only when I got more involved in the NRS FGC is that I seen more of the, you know, the complaining. Or and not only towards like the game, but like more of like towards each other and i didn't know where it came from and i kind of still don't know where it comes from jazzfulness yeah I we invented that word because we didn't have a word to describe that before so we invented that word because words are just descriptions of thoughts yep. and we think about people that are like that and we didn't have a word for it like how do we describe people that just fucking whine about mortal Kombat all the time mm -hmm. ah, i got an invention bitch asshole that's it yeah that's the word yeah i i mean that's pretty much it so so for, for those people that uh, want to start having fun with this game or, you know, get better at the game, who probably are bitch ass fool, uh, what would your words be to them? For, for I wouldn't have any words. I would use someone else's words, which is Bruce Lee. He's kind of important. I don't know if you guys have ever heard. A little bit of backstory. I Bruce Lee, Bruce the greatest Lee. of all fucking time. He right? is. Oh, I, must, I will say Bruce of Lee. All of goddamn time, right? Bruce Lee quote fucking master what you train okay if you want to improve what what do you want to improve at mm -hmm. that's the question people have all these things i want to get better better at what you will master it you will get better mm -hmm. you got to answer that better at what first okay and that was the question they asked bruce lee do you think you could beat up a boxer do you think you could beat muhammad ali in the ring and bruce lee was like no i'm not going to beat muhammad ali in a boxing match that's his fucking kingdom. Mm -hmm. You master what you train. He trained boxing. Could I beat him in a street fight? Maybe, perhaps. But I'm not beating him in a boxing ring. You're fucking crazy. I don't care that I'm Bruce Lee. He's Muhammad Ali, and it's a boxing ring. You know? And that's the way I, I think people need to answer that question of what? 
what are you trying to improve at and what is your goal? Come up with a goal first before people say, oh, it's not about the end. It's about the journey. Yeah, but a journey isn't directionless. Yeah. The journey of getting good is more fun than the actual getting good. But what are you trying to get good at? Because get good is nebulous. There are people that are really fucking good at Towers of Time. I don't give two shits about those people, but they're really fucking good at it. Yeah. Do you want to be good at Towers of Time? Well, nah, man, I don't give a shit about that. Okay, well, then what do you want to be good at? And when people can answer that question, I feel like they will be able to get those results and the success that they're looking for. Because right now, most players are directionless. Yeah. And that's what I do within my community. That's why we have such a villainous personality because we are giving the MK community a direction. Come kick our ass. Yep. You, don't, you don't have to enjoy this game. You don't have to like it. I like it. I'm going to be having fun whether I win or lose. I don't give a shit. I'm mm -hmm. having fun because I love playing this game. But you seem to need a goal and a motivation. So let me be your huckleberry. I'll be your tourniquet. Okay. Throw your hatred out on me. Come to my fucking temple. Come beat up me and all of my sweaty ass fans. There's your goal. There's your motivation. And when you come in and kick all of our asses and you have the time of your life, maybe you'll stop saying that MK11 sucks. But until then, I don't know, man. You need to figure out your goal. Some people don't have that as a goal. Some people's goal is to beat story mode, in which case, I don't know, man. You got to uppercut Chronica a lot. That just seems to be what works. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Now, um, Last question for you. Um, now, we all know you for, you know, your, you know, of course, trash talk temple and, you know, your beef set stuff. Um, my, my thing is this, and I didn't really know how to answer this question um, from, you know. Uh, I thought that's why part. you're asking, right? Yeah. you don't have the answer? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm way too nice. I don't know how to handle it. Um, but the thing is, is that a lot of people are saying, like, what is the deal with, I mean, win or lose? Mind you, this could be in tournaments, this could be, you know, casual online play, ranked online play, whatever it may be. But win or lose, there seems to be a bad attitude. And I didn't know how, how to yeah. like answer it or 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 to say well, where it comes to from. Mr. Bad attitude. It depends on the context and what bad attitude we're talking like, about. Because, like, yeah, if somebody's playing me and I'm giving them a bad attitude, like, that's just kind of my thing, yeah. right? You either accept it or you don't. So that's not an issue with Mortal Kombat. That's your issue with me. Yeah. Well, that's the, fine, the example right? the person gave mad, me was just that, like, they won, right? They won. And, well, the beginning of the match, they started just talking mad shit from the, right, right when they connected – throughout the whole entire match and then the you know they won and talked to even, even more match shit and then they met up with that person again it's in the same combat league and they talked match shit through you know all throughout and lost and still talk match shit now i'm thinking maybe it was just that person but also too he's saying that a, there's a lot of players who just have this mentality and attitude to just shit on complete strangers now, I want to believe it's just oh, someone man. hiding behind wait a screen. It's my time to talk. Oh, <laughs> just wait. Go ahead. Finish what you're saying. I, my thing is, I'm thinking maybe it's just people feeling safe behind a screen. Because I can guarantee you if, like, if you're competitive and that person was competitive and you guys met up in an offline tourney, I don't think it would go down that way. But I'm curious to know what you feel on that one. Okay, I'm going to start with a quote. A quote from a very smart guy. Smarter than me way fucking smarter than me right he's an ex-wrestler used mm -hmm. to wrestle back in the day and now he does science instead his name is neil degrasse tyson okay. here is the quote very smart guy he said the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you think about that yeah the universe has no obligation to make sense to you that person that teabagged you is under no obligation to make sure you have a good day. He is only under obligations to make himself have a good day, and he has a good day by teabagging people. It sounds to me like whoever is making this complaint is a bitch ass, okay? Because he can't teabag you if he loses. <laughs> so stop whining. 
Okay, if it matters so much that people are teabagging you, then learn how to win in combat league, learn fucking sub zero, do the YOLO 50 50s, win that, start teabagging people, or, or post a re, uh, clip video of you beating teabaggers. Look, it's teabag revenge in combat league. I don't give a fuck because I am the teabagger. And if you beat my ass, all right, well, I guess I don't get to teabag, but oh well. Oh, look, he teabagged me. All right, good for him. He won. That, that, that's his reward. He got to teabag me. I hope he enjoyed himself. Right? Because when I teabag, I enjoy myself. You're going to be mad. You're going to be so mad. And I'm going to laugh so hard. It's going to be so good. And I'm going to share this with my community. And we will all just collectively laugh at your ass. Okay? And what, again, it goes back to context and priorities. What is your priority? You, I just want to have fun. Okay. Well, I have fun when I do teabags. Well, I don't, that's not fun for me. Okay. Well, what is fun for you? Winning. Okay. We'll go play where you can win. Well, play me because I'll teabag you. Okay. Well, I, I, I can only win against towers of time. Okay. Well, then it seems like you need to get better at being competitive. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can't do that. Okay. Well, then fucking quit complaining. Okay. I can't fly. You don't see me <laughs> bitching about it. <laughs> yeah, I got a point. <laughs> Like, oh you're, my you're, God. You're, whoever it is i mean i'm sure it's probably one of your fans it might even be one of my fans if there's one thing my fans know is that i'm gonna talk shit about them right yeah. and they talk shit about me all the time i get fucking salty dude i'll fucking rage quit i'll fucking get mad as fuck and they'll just laugh and chatter just be blowing me up and it's like, so right, would man, you whatever. say that they shouldn't be taking it personal oh, they should just fucking win yeah if they take it personal right if that's the thing that fucking that's the trigger right the trigger warning mm -hmm. if getting teabagged triggers you and you need to make damn sure you don't ever fucking lose yeah and I, you can make sure you don't ever fucking lose by getting so damn good that no one ever beats you again i think that's what sonic fox did yeah you could just quit the game mm -hmm. I, I, quit actually the game. actually that's what it's exactly what he said in an interview he was like the r r reason why like i you know i you know i'm, I'm so good is because you know i'm you know i don't want people saying that ha ha i beat you or ha sonic fox is a loser it's like nah you're the loser watch and that's that was pretty much his thing it's like nah i'm i'm not gonna lose you're gonna lose and that's it's where his confidence fox. came from he bags people he, fuck, he, sorry, he mercies so people look at that motherfucker smile look at how much fun that fucking blue haired piece of shit is having like why don't you want to be that yeah, he's fucking looking at the guys in pools that are bitching about going zero and two because they lost to a fucking Fujin, and they're not happy. And you look at Sonic Fox, and Sonic is giggling like a fucking idiot with <laughs> autism and fucking cocaine, right? Just fucking happy as shit, winning. Yeah, pretty much. There's yeah. not much else that needs to be said. Yeah, right. You're right. You're, you're whoever your fan or your viewer. Stop being a bitch. Okay. I'm yeah, sorry. There you go. The world is cold. It is cruel. I can barely walk anymore. Like I'm like, I'm trust me. There's tragedies. Quit being a fucking bitch, dude. Quit mm -hmm. being a bitch. The world is going to shit on you. You either fucking smile about that shit and have a good time and leave this fucking planet with a goddamn story to tell. Or you just fucking die like everybody else and die nameless and worthless and nobody fucking gives a shit. Okay. Nobody fucking cares. Only you care. Let me tell you, this was a point I was trying to bring up before. And then we got, we, we went on another topic and I won my first tournament, right? First time I ever won a tournament. All right. Nobody fucking cared. Nobody gave a shit. My first time playing a fighting game, the first time ever, was at a Chuck E. Cheese. It was for a cute redheaded girl in my class. It was her birthday. God damn, I miss her. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, I was like fucking nine years old, okay? Right? It's in the past. She's away now, right? But we were at a Chuck E. Cheese. Street Fighter Two just came out, and off in a dark corner, there was a game no one had ever seen before. But there was two guys, there was a dude fighting a ninja and the dude had a funny hat and they were on a bridge. Apparently that game kind of became important. But at this time, everybody was playing Street Fighter II Champion Edition. And we're a bunch of little fucking kids. Mm -hmm. and we roll up to the arcade machine, there's a teenager there. If you lived in the arcade era, you know this, right? There was some kid that was 17 beating up all the 18 or the eight year olds, not 18 year olds, 
right? Someone at 17 beating all the eight, eight year olds. I just said it again. Eight year olds at fucking Street Fighter 2. All of my friends at the Chuck E. Cheese party, everybody fucking got their ass kicked. It was my turn. It was my quarter. I walked up to the machine, right? He was playing M. Bison. If you don't know anything about Championship Edition M. Bison, let's just say you don't know top tier yet, okay? That was the top that tier was from abysmal. which all other top tiers are based upon. That character Ugh. was cheap. Okay, this guy picked Champion Edition and Bison. I have never played a fighting game in my life. I saw Vega. He had a claw. I was like, dude, I'm picking this guy. He's got a weapon. Everybody's fighting with karate. This guy has a weapon. I'm going to take the smart pick. And I proceed to beat the shit out of this fucking teenager. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I knew jump kicks did a lot of damage. I'm going to do that again. And I beat the fuck out of him. Didn't know nothing about tears. Fucking nothing about frame data. Didn't have an optimal combo. I'm fighting somebody picking a top tier. And I've never played before. And I won. Hell yeah. And I turned around and I looked to see my friends cheering for me. And while I was playing my match, the pizza arrived. So everyone went to go eat pizza. Because so <laughs> at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you fucking win. Nobody fucking cares. Did you have fun? I had fun beating that guy's ass. I had fun. Nobody fucking saw it and nobody fucking cared. But you know what? I remember that for the rest of my life to the point where now I fucking play fighting games all day, every fucking day. That's that's really weird. If, if that was that your was that your uh, wish, call it your your introduction to to fighting that was games my as a whole. Introduction to fighting games. Period. Wow. Hey, I'm that fucking old. Before fighting games, to me, video games were like Castlevania and Contra that like I would play at my cousin's house and we would play Ghost and Goblins and fucking die on the first level and then get mad and then go fucking read X Men comics or watch wrestling. Right. That was video games. Yeah. And then when Street Fighter came out, I was like, holy shit. Like, I like karate. Karate's dope. It's a whole fucking video game about. Oh, wow. Everybody is a different kind of karate. This guy has monster karate. And he's green. Oh, shit. I'm all about this. Let's get more of this. And, you know, and then I branched on to other fighting games. But I won my first ever game ever in a fighting game. And yet, does anybody fucking give a shit? Does anybody know? There's a few people that know who I am. There's a few. I'm famous in a small circle, but nobody fucking cares. So why do you care? I had fun, though. That's why the story was uh, relevant to me. It's because I had fun, dude. I did a lot of fucking jump kicks. That advice and fucking ate my fucking dick. <laughs> that shit was great. Yeah, and that's funny because that's that's kind of extremely similar to how I, I got into having fun with just Mortal Kombat in general, was that we had an uh like a really shitty arcade like in the ghetto of wainai hawaii that was like right down the street from the from our actual school and there was always this fatter bigger kid named you know i'm just gonna say his name on stream fuck you sean 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 would always literally like he would push people off the mortal kombat cabinet and it, and the mortal kombat cabinet was like brand spanking new in that arcade like it was the it was the newest thing and we're like, yo, look, there's blood. There's, there's, you know, people uppercutting each other's heads off. Like that, that was sick. And I wanted to yeah. play it. Do you want to know why I wanted to play it? Because I walked, I, I, I was, my grandfather played nothing but Bruce Lee movies. When I go to grandpa's house, there's nothing but Bruce Lee movies. You're done with that movie? Rerun it. We're watching it again. But then <laughs> I, I heard Luke Kang go, what? I was hooked. I was like, I want to play that game. But this. You know, right. fat, gelatinous, you know, freaking meathead, Sean, Sean kept pushing. I would put my quarter up and he would literally swipe everyone's quarters off. I'm like, you bitch. Oh, you should have you punched him in the dick. You should have gave him a Johnny Cage. You were eight years old, dog. You, there's no problem. I was so, I was so, I was so <laughs> mad. I was so mad. Like I, I pushed him. Now, but... I, I put, I pushed him and then my brother jumped in, but. He was fat, so all you had to do was, I don't know, sit on us. But anywho, like, I was like, man, fuck this guy. Like, I, 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 I was so mad at this kid. I will come home with, with the black eye, and then I had to be embarrassed and say, I got beat up because I wanted to play a video game, and this guy won't let me. But then I was like, hmm, we had this other kid who had an actual Sega. We didn't have the Sega, but we went down the street and played Mortal Kombat on his Sega. And I was like, I'm a, I'm a use Luke Kang. That's that, 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 that's the, that, that's the Bruce Lee guy, right? Four hard kick, four four high kick. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that's all it was. I, four high kick. And then, four, four and then, the, and then the next day, I was like, hey, I'll play you for it. 
I'll, I'll play. I'll, I'll play for your whole role. I'll, I'll, I'll play. I'll, we'll play for role. I whipped his fucking ass, and I remember everybody freaking talking about it at school for about two days, and that was it. But I could guarantee you, he never played Mortal Kombat again. This, I, I guarantee, I made this fat bitch cry. I really did. I'm pretty sure I did because he was like, I don't know, like twelve, and I was like eight. You were Samoa Joe, and you were Big Papa Pump. I was like, I was like, one percent chance to win. I was like, fuck you and your freaking green character and her fan fan bullshit. Fuck you. You got your ass whipped by Bruce Lee, and like I, my brother just looked at me like, yo, wh like, what the? F you, you beat Sean Brown. You you beat Sean Thomas Brown. I was like, you damn fucker, right? I did. This, right, I, I, I I earned this black guy. God damn it. Now I got this whole roll of quarters. Hey, next game's on me. <laughs> and you got socked for it. People don't remember those days. When you if you grab them too much, they'll fucking punch you. <laughs> that shit was fucking funny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I never cared, dude. I'll fucking go up to Children of the Atom and fucking pick Psylocke and do nothing but fucking jump kick and side flash all fucking day. And if people, if you're a fucking piece of shit, I'll fucking hate you. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. Side flash! Or, 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 or Killer Instinct, when you play a Cinder, all you have to do is just forward, forward, and one forward, button. Forward, punch, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And then he, he just goes, da, 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 da. And they're like, how the fuck do you do that? Oh, he's so good. I was like, bro, I'm just doing boop, 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 boop. That's all, that's all I'm doing. An occasional boop, j j just to get that ultra in at the end. J just to I, rub the like, salt in it. Those, those olden days, and I think that that's a big uh, aspect of what I try to bring back to my channel, is bring back those old days, that arcade feel on Twitch. I, I yeah. feel like my channel is the closest to that, because we is. shit on each other. We talk a lot of shit. That's what happened in the arcade, man. Yeah, There's the arcades, oh my god, of how many, like... It wasn't a lot of like physical fights, but just like altercations of like yelling at each other, and then like that one person that always got shit on comes in the next day and shits on the person that was shitting on them is the coolest thing you'll ever witness in person. You're just like, ooh, I, he, I, ooh. It was hype moments, and it was. And I, I, people, if I to me like the way I play this game is I just hunt for those hype moments mm -hmm. so I'll lose right I lose a lot on stream because I try to hunt for hype moments I yeah. mean I can sit there and fucking turtle up and beat someone with down three grab but like nobody wants to watch that shit but yeah. if I can hit that one frame link like maybe people will be excited right so when I stream I don't necessarily stream to win I stream to make the game look good Make yeah. the game look exciting. And that's what's important. And I think people need to do that. They need to find out what their goal is. My goal mm -hmm. is I like playing this game. I want more people to play it. I understand that there's some stupid shit in this game. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to showcase any of that stupid shit. I'm yeah. going to showcase the shit I like. And then if people also like that, they can play with me. But I'm not going to showcase the stupid shit. I'm just going to ignore it. Nobody's forcing me to fight fucking Fujin, so I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. I, and I have a blast when I play Mortal Kombat. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's why I really appreciated you coming on this podcast because I wanted to talk about things that you know too many MK podcasts are doing. Like they're they're, they're talking about the big major problems or what is when is NRS going to come out of the patch? That's 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 too much. But for your stream and for you know my show i wanted to bring you on because i wanted to talk about you know the important stuff that i think players should and you know in in incorporate with their lifestyle and playing this game is that you, you got to learn how to have fun with it and that that's something i struggled with but i'm slowly re regaining that is that you got to stop doing it so seriously you need to live for those hype moments you, you just got to live for what you want to play the game for you gotta you gotta find the fun in it, but you gotta have a goal with that fun, and that's why, like you know, in this podcast, I hope a lot of the people actually learn from it. Is that pretty much stop being a bitch ass and have fun with the game. If you're not having fun, no one's gonna shit on you for wanting to play something else. Right? It's fucking video games. It's like, video everybody games. Everybody is fucking serious as if their life depends on it. And I'm like, dude, I stream full time. Like literally, my life does kind of depend on this. Like if Mortal Kombat 11 takes a shit. Right, which it has been. Yeah. It's taking a shit. Nobody mm -hmm. fucking likes this game anymore. That's why we're having a podcast to like to talk about people bitching about it. So literally, my life depends on Mortal Kombat being successful and popular. And at the end of the day, I don't fucking care. It's fucking video games. I'm gonna have fun or I'm not. 
maybe if Mortal Kombat doesn't work out, I'll find another game that will. If I can't find another game that will, well, maybe streaming isn't for me, right? Mm -hmm. But like people need to take stock and like, what are you proud? What are you trying to even accomplish before you sit there and try to do anything? What the fuck do you even want to do? You want to be a streamer then fucking stream. Yeah. Like, what, right? like, what are you, you here be, for? You want to be good at Mortal Kombat. Okay. Define good. Cause there's a lot of definitions for good. Mm -hmm. You want to hit dope ass combos. Okay. Then you work on that. You want to win tournaments? Okay, we'll work on that. No, nah, man, I just want to do fatalities with my friends. Okay, well, then do that. Well, but I don't have any friends. Okay, so your problem is you don't have any friends. <laughs> yeah. That's much. the real problem is nobody fucking likes you. So maybe read a book about how to not be a cock, and then people will like you, and then you'll have friends, and then you can casually play Mortal Kombat with your friends. The issue is not Mortal Kombat. The issue is you. Yeah. Nine times out of ten. Okay, yep. nine times out of 10, the issue is never Mortal Kombat. It is never the game's fault. The game is under no obligation to make sense to you. It exists as its own standalone finite thing. You take it or leave it. If you don't like it, then why are you putting yourself through that misery? Mm -hmm. It's illogical. You're an idiot, and I'm going to tell you you're an idiot because apparently no one else will. Amen. Well, if Tom Brady were here, I'm a fan of Tom Brady. I watch every fucking video he puts out. I like it. I've been doing this for fucking decades, right? Ever since the living guy, I fucking, I go, when he posts a video, I watch it. I hit the like button and I'm like, good for you, Tom Brady. But if he were here right now, I would tell him, Tom Brady, you were kind of a bitch. Cause it seems like you don't like Mortal Kombat. And yet you keep fucking playing it and being miserable and no one wants to see you miserable. They want to see you fucking laughing and having a good time because that's why people watched you in the first fucking place. So quit playing Mortal Kombat and quit being a little bitch about it. As a fan. We love you, Tom. We're looking out for you, man. As a fan. <laughs> Play Diablo 3. <laughs> Play Diablo 3, man. Come on. Dude, everybody hates this guy, right? Everybody, they're like, he stole from his fans. Blah. I'm like, dude, that shit... Did he steal from you? No? Okay, well, why do you fucking care? Fuck, he stole from some guy you don't know. Okay, well, don't let him steal from you. That doesn't mean I can't watch his videos and fucking enjoy them, right? Yeah. I fucking, if you were, I'm a huge fan of Tom Brown. I don't give a shit if anybody fucking, oh, you support Same here. this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. you goddamn right I support him. He puts out videos I find entertaining, and as long as I'm entertained by him, I'm gonna fucking give the guy some love, because I don't give a shit, right? He hasn't done nothing yep. to me, right? Muhammad Ali. Oh, why won't you fight in Vietnam War? Right? Because no Vietnamese ever called me the N word, right? There you go. Brady never said shit to me, so I'm not going to shit on him. But if he were here in person, as a fan, I would say, Tom Brady, you're a sellout bitch ass. You're only playing this game for the fucking money, and it seems like you don't enjoy it. You need to fucking quit. Yeah. You and need to quit Mortal Kombat because nobody wants to watch you be miserable with this fucking game. Yeah, exactly. And and that's why and that's why like recently on my personal stream I actually been playing a lot of Tekken and Hunt because those two games, I mean, I'm having a blast. I mean, yeah, I'm playing MK11 when people ask me to because I mean, my PS5 is right here and I play Tekken on my PC. I could just switch the damn screens. But well, th that's a different situation. But but that's the thing like with MK11, I wasn't I wasn't having fun because like when someone would pick up like I played against somebody who picked up Katana and all all they did was literally uh jump backwards fan flutter fans jump back fan flutter fans 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 and then i'm to me in my head i'm like i'm fucking bored and, and not with the game just with this match like I, i'm uh, it's like oh come here come here i'm gonna get you oh i'm gonna get you it's like i'm i'm bored i don't, I don't want to play against you you're boring you're not fun. This I isn't just fun. quit the match. Yeah. Just fucking quit the match. Yeah, so, so that's like, what I'm saying. People are so fucking hung up on, like, rage quitting. I'm like, dude, I, I almost never rage quit, but I'm not ashamed to be like, yeah, dude. I'm yeah, like, like, on that, like, on that stream, on the, the last, on the last set, on the last set, I literally, like, um, in the middle of the match when she was, when she was, like, throwing fans, I literally got up from my, from my chair, middle of match, not blocking or anything, got up from my chair, went to my fridge, grabbed a soda, came back down, and, and started going through Twitter on my phone. I was like, is it done yet? And everyone's right. like, well, what's your problem? I was like, I, nothing. I was just bored. I already knew where this was going. I just wanted it to be done. <laughs> it's like, dude, could I chase this idiot down, blow him up in the corner, and beat them? 
Yeah, I probably have done it before. I'm a streamer. There's proof, right? You can go on my YouTube channel. I'm sure there's a video of me chasing down a jade that does fucking horrors or diagonal shuriken, right? Just purple yeah. shit, jump back shuriken, right? I've, I've fucking beaten those in combat league before. I've shown that I can do it. I have nothing to prove. So when I fight one of those, it's like, do I want to sit here? Do, do I want to waste my time? Potentially six rounds of this shit. That's yeah. me. It's like, dude, combat league is fucking two out of three set, right? Of two out of three rounds. So potentially I got to deal with this shit for six rounds. Do I give a fuck about combat league points? No, the no. fuck I do not. I'm getting the hell out of here. Fuck you. You win. Hey, you get the points. Who got the points? Yeah. Good for you. You won. I have nothing Congratulations. Have you nothing got that skin you always wanted. Congrats. <laughs> I have nothing to gain your ass and i know i could beat your ass and i don't care if anybody knows mm -hmm. right people try to clout just like oh i beat so-and-so streamer i fucking advertise that shit i'll be like yeah that dude beat my ass maybe come over to my stream yeah. and beat my ass as well that'll just get me more viewers right that's Pretty just much. better for business yep it's like you know what, what is people don't know their priorities i guess that's like the theme yeah no i'm in the right priorities yep but uh badger Thank you so much for agreeing to the very first, very first Sunday School podcast. It was such a pleasure to actually have you. And actually, I think you opened up a lot of not only, you know, my viewers' eyes, but a lot of people at home probably, you know, re-watching this recording. And uh, yeah, is there any, I mean, before I, I say all your credentials and stuff like that, is there any other message you want to say to uh, the people at Sunday School, MKO, or anybody at home? Yeah, um, it, I found that I actually play better when I smoke a lot of weed. Um, so if you're struggling a lot, I would recommend only if it's legal in your area. I don't want anybody to commit any crimes, right? I'm in SoCal. This shit's been legal for a fucking decade, right? So like, I smoke a lot of weed and it mellows me out and I play a lot more relaxed and everything is hilarious. So, I mean, all of the things that I've said, if you find that too difficult to do, maybe try a chemical remedy. And then if that works, then fucking party on, right? Yep. Smoke weed every day. That's my closing <laughs> thought. Hey, you you heard it from the legend Badger himself. Now, uh, before we go, is there anyone in my chat or probably in your chat? Uh, we like to have class discussions uh, for like take a few questions from any viewers if they have any. Um, anything you want to ask myself or Badger? We're just going to have like a good, you know, maybe like three to four minute while we while me and badger bullshit and just answer your questions before we close but uh while we're waiting for you guys questions make sure you go check out so kyle honey badgers um uh youtube twitter twitch make sure you follow him harass him stalk him fight him only if you're hot dude i don't want to do that some fucking wildebeest with fucking dreadlocks like i mean listen i like i like white people but i am not attracted to white people with dreadlocks let's just get that out so if you're a white person and you have dreadlocks i forbid you to stop me. <laughs> that's your john davis i like corn i like corn oh my god <laughs> but yeah um <laughs> but damn dude like uh yeah, it, it's just like a lot of people, even even if we don't have any questions like now from your chat or my chat, uh, it's just a lot of people have been DMing me of like how to, it's it's not necessarily like what I feel about certain things. It's mostly about like how, to, how do I deal with certain things. And it's usually like mentality stuff. Like for me, like when, when I was younger, um, there was a big difference in, in like the tendency between like, uh, what's it called? Between um, like... The Asian players versus the the, Amer the American oh, players. Fucking Asians, man. They are all. Oh, the I got my ass whipped by JDCR, and I thought he was gonna. I thought he. I thought he was gonna rub it in shit, but he literally looked me straight in the eyes with his broken English, pointed to the practice tables, and go, "Come, come, I, I, I'll show you what, uh, what you can do next time." I'm like, that's why he's the best at Tekken. I'm like, what the fuck. And like you know, he showed me. He goes, he goes, hey Hachi's, uh, uh, God fist. It's it's high. So Horang could do down, down four four, and get immediate launcher. I'm like, why didn't I fucking know that? <laughs> God, what? Oh my God! It only took him five seconds to tell me that. Would there be more podcasts? If I come out and says yes, there will be a lot more podcasts to come. Uh, we're gonna try to do uh as much possible, but not like one every weekend. 
but we're going to try to do to the point where it's like uh, a regular uh a rather a regular class session and then afterwards we'll have a podcast and if we can't find any guests then i'll probably bring on some people from the mko team or maybe we'll bring you know people back on like like badger and you know multiple other people sometimes we'll, we'll bring on pro players if we need to but yeah like like jdcr like he he showed me tech but then when it came down to the american players uh what percent came up to yeah they, they they want it like even in pools they they want to put you the lowest of the low and someone told me he goes dude matter of fact you should actually feel proud about that that they're trying to shit talk you before the match. I'm like, why is that? He goes, because they're scared. He's scared. To, they're scared to play you when you're at your best. That they that they, they have to resort to putting you down or hope hope like hopefully your you you know your your mental they, fortitude they're falters. They're admitting they can't beat you yeah. in the game, so they have to beat you out of it. Uh, so this guys, is coming from the king shit talker. Yeah, that's that true. They are admitting, right? I talk shit after a match. I talk shit before a match smart i'm too smart for that i'm an idiot but i'm too smart to talk shit before a match unless it's like a homie or something or unless yeah. it's like a meme like if somebody's like a new viewer like if fucking hayate came to my stream yeah i'm gonna talk shit to hayate right that's yeah. just kind of what i do on my channel yeah. but i don't talk shit before a match if i if the context matters i'll talk <laughs> shit after the match uh, talk shit after you earned it will there be a show tonight yes there will be a show tonight at um 8 45 p.m that is through the class but yeah, like it's it's crazy to me that you know, once I had that in my head, now that it's always in my head. Bef if anyone is trying to like talk smack to me before a match, and that's why like offline, like I would, you'll see me wear my earbuds all the time. I'll just put in my earbuds and, and like you're free, you're trash. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, okay. You right. know what I get with those? I just I try to beat them with only grabs. <laughs> I, well, I just don't. I only grab them. Right? Why, why do you imagine I get I get so much hate from American players when I play Tekken offline when I use fucking Horang? Of course, I'm just gonna do down three four and then two down three four two down three down three four two and then they're they're jailed. They, they they can't do anything because why? Because they don't know how to fucking low parry. That's why. Hey. Like, and like, I just, I fucking, when I get someone talking shit, I'll try to beat them with grabs. And if I win, I'll be like, dude, you talking a lot of shit, but you don't know how to stop grabs. So I, I would say neutral duck or maybe push a button. Just push any button. It's a 50, 50. You could break it. You could do it. You could do a button press. Yeah. And then they get mad. And if they beat me, they're like, oh yeah, you fucking suck. It's like, yeah, man, that was rough, man. I probably should have used shit other than grabs. I probably should have tried to use my other moves. Yeah, yeah you, you totally kicked my ass. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, you win. You're better than me. Maybe next time I won't just yeah. use grabs. Oh, Then and... refuse to fight them, right? Refuse. Yeah. Just be, okay, well, fight me without grabs, right? Nah, I don't want to fight you. You're kind of a dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you have no <laughs> idea. In offline, you have, chat, you have no idea how pissed off people get when they want to play you. Like, if they want to rematch you. And you casually say nah. You have no idea nah. how fired up they get because they want to nah. prove something, but they don't get to. Hey, even if you concede, right? So people will talk shit, right? They'll get in my face. Oh, fuck you up, blah, blah, blah. First to 10, 100 bucks. Let's do it right now. Are you a pussy? I'm like, yeah, I'm a big fucking pussy. You win. <laughs> yeah, then, exactly. Fucking pissed. They're so mad. And he's like, fuck you. Yeah, fuck me. Shit, dude. Oh, God. Money I match me. No. 50 bucks right now. I was like, sorry. Uh, I don't have I, I, know. I, I, don't, I don't have 50 I'm, bucks. I'm not very good at this game. You'd probably beat me. It would be a waste like, of huh, me. You're a that pussy. I was like, yeah, money. yeah. I, I am scared. I'm scared to lose 50 bucks because, like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hungry. I wanted to go to the, Denny's yeah. afterwards. Like, <laughs> you know, I, don't play. Listen, when you think you have all the answers, I just change all the questions, right? Do you yeah. think that this is about in-game? Nah, it's not about the game, dog. I don't give a shit, right? Go ahead. Tell people you beat me. I don't fucking care. I'm not going to play you. I don't like you. You're a dick, right? Yeah. I only play people I like. You're a dick. I don't like yeah. you. I'm not going to play you. Pretty and then much. they get mad. And they, and they, That's coming from the guy who always is the dick that makes everyone mad. Yeah, and, and it's funny because, like, when – Especially when you don't like give like the, these people that try to get a rise out of you a time or day or like give them any arsenal to work with, they have nothing to do. They usually turn off their mic afterwards or they get bored because you're not you're not saying anything back. Like I remember once I like like a guy 
told me to go kill myself. I was like, oh, I already did. It didn't work. Or I already tried. It didn't work. The pills. Yeah. It, I, I just woke up the next morning. Not good at it, man. Everybody's got their niche. Yeah. And then, and then like, he had nothing else to say after that. And I'm just like, huh. So that's all it takes. But if you don't give into that kind of stuff, I mean, if, even if it, like, if, if it's fun for you to, to get a rise out of it, but by you beating them and then they're getting all pissed off it was like ooh, ooh, hold up hold up what, what, what where's my salt jar mm, that's good I mean, you, know, you know what i'm saying best advice i could give on that would be just don't ever lose there you, you go. never lose you don't always have to win but don't ever lose right don't put yourself in a position where you can lose only put yourself in a position where you can win if you never lose you'll never have to be salty so if somebody's getting in your face talking shit and you know that if he beats you, you're going to be salty as fuck. Well, then don't let him beat you. If that means you yep. just get better and beat his ass, then so be it. If that means you don't take that fight in the first day or in the first place, you just hold that, then so be it. But what's going to make you more tilted? Him running around saying he beat your ass because you were scared to fight him or him beating your ass and proving it and making you look like an idiot and you having to hold that legitimately for real. Guaranteed, for sure. But yeah, everybody, uh, that was our podcast. Um, Badger, again, I really appreciate it. I hope we could do it again. Please go check out this man's stream. You're going to continue streaming after this, correct? Yeah, I'm going to get prepared. We have our league setting up, okay. uh, the beef set league. So anyone that wants to yes. compete, if you're shitty at the game, just compete anyways. Anyone who competes on stream like gets a piece of the pot. My pot is distributed amongst all competitors who compete on stream. The person who has the most points at the end of the season is the champion. They get a larger part of the pot, but everybody, you know, and it's all community funded, community ran, community everything, right? I, I put mm -hmm. like 50 bucks into this shit from fucking Twitch subs, but everything else that goes into there, you guys are making your own tournament series. Like I found that my niche in this world is to just be the master of ceremonies and show these people how to build a fucking community. So if yep. you want to be a part of the community, you're welcome to join us. You will get out of it what you put into it. You don't put a whole lot and you just want to show to watch and laugh and giggle and, and make fun of people and teabag them by all means. But if you want to, you know, be a little bit more involved, we have more opportunities for that. And we are a very beginner, uh, I want to say beginner welcoming community we love not, beginners not beginner we teach you guys how to play <laughs> beginner welcoming okay we love beginners <laughs> we love teaching them how to play and uh they give us a lot of content when they're really awful i can get some of my best material like some of the best jokes i've had is just from people being really really bad at this game so i love beginners i want more of them and if you don't believe in what my community is doing, just keep looking at fucking Outworld Television and there you go. fucking Polos came from mm -hmm. my community. Mm -hmm. Polos was a viewer of my channel before his channel blew up. Okay, yep. you got a lot to learn and we got a lot to teach you. We're going to do it very, very. We're not going to be nice about it, but I guarantee you we'll get you where you need to be. There you go. So, yes, go check out the beef set. Actually, join in on the beef set if you guys can. And uh, it's um, your... I mean, pr pretty much all, all of your handles is, is pretty much spelled the same, right? T-R-S-H. No, it's SoCal Honey Badger. T-R-S-H is a fucking meme. That's oh, yeah, Jim yeah. fault. That's just something on the Discord. Uh, Team Trash is not an actual clan. It's more of like the people's clan. Anybody yeah. that wants to run the Team Trash tag, just fucking run it, okay? At the end of the day, we're all trash at this game anyways. So why not fucking advertise how bad you are? And if you win, well, then you just, you're just you looking more impressive. And if you lose, they'll be like, ah, whatever. He's just in team trash. That's not even a real clan. So you have nothing to lose. Like, you, there's no humiliation. Yeah, you know, pride exactly. isn't on the line. My pride is on the line. You guys go out there and lose with my fucking tag, right? And I look bad, but I don't give a shit. Right? Yeah. Team trash isn't about that. So if you're looking for me, it's always SoCal, as in Southern California, not social. SoCal, honey. Like the food, not horny, like the emotion, badger. Everybody always gets badger right, though. But I get social honey badger, SoCal horny badger. They always get badger right. So everybody yeah. just calls me badger. Yeah. There's no spaces, and that's it. SoCal honey badger It's all one word. It's not hard to find. I try to idiot-proof my shit because I know that anybody that would be a fan of me is probably an idiot. So I have to keep that in mind because uh, only an idiot would want to hang out with a fucking moron like me. Hey.
I just I mean realized that something. <laughs> I mean that tenderly, right? Yeah. I mean that tenderly. It's the self-deprecation, right? Yeah, only I get somebody you. who is comfortable with being an idiot is the only kind of people who would be comfortable hanging out with other people. It's about humility and being humble and yeah. having fun and talking shit from a place of brotherhood and friendship. Mm -hmm. We humble each other because we know that that's the only way any of us will progress. If nobody calls us out on our bullshit and nobody shits on us, then we're going to end up like all these pussy ass motherfuckers who think they're hot shit and they're not because no one ever told them how awful they are. So we keep each other in check. We look out for each other. We know that this is important what we do. We keep each other's heads level. We keep each other from getting too fucking big for our britches because that's where the downfall comes. And we never only gains. Every day is a green day. Every day is improvement. No losses. Never, ever lose. Amen and to that. When you have to lose, lose with your friends and learn from it. Hell yeah, man. Amen people, to that. Man. There you go. Thanks for having me. I'd love to do this again. I do this every week. I did do this every week. I do yeah, this you again. Did. So whenever you guys want to have me on, I'm absolutely down for it. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, as I said, thanks again, dude. And for everyone at home, make sure to keep on fighting on. And to quote Badger, don't fucking lose. And don't get hit. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Don't but yeah, lose. I will see you guys probably later on. I will uh, have um, the actual um, ranked lead se sessions. And if anybody else in class won't, wants to do some sets with me as well. Um, for now, um, I suggest uh, from everybody in this stream, to go and transfer over to um, Honey Badger, give him a follow, go on his YouTube channel, subscribe. And uh, I'll, if anybody who's actually like re-watching this on, on YouTube, um, I'll leave his handles down below. And for that, I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you, Badger, and I'll see you later. Late. This is Discord. Let me close it.